They were all shot in Belgium, where he never lost a professional fight and was knocked down only once. Round four, he caught me with a terrific left hook here, and uh, I went down face first. And uh, they say there's an old saying in boxing, that when you go down face first, you, you never get up, you know? There I go, oh, timber. There it is. <laughs> uh, I thought it was the end. Yeah. Everyone thought it was the end. But... You think it was the end? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you can imagine, see, so you can imagine how it must break a fella's heart, you know, when he hits you with a shot like that and you go down face first and then you just get up and just storm back into him. It would take something special to knock me down and keep me down. Life has knocked Williams down a lot. It started back in 1977 when he first tried to turn professional. In actual fact, I did sign contracts with Mickey Duff and um, I'll always remember he signing the contracts in his office in Wardour Street and uh, he put his arm around me and he said to me, well, if you're half as an exciting fighter as what they, as what they say you are, we're going to make a small fortune together. And then um, about a week later, he phoned back and said to me, uh, forget about it. And that was it, that was it as far as he was concerned and I decided to carry on as an amateur. Duff rejected him because of an adverse eyesight report. But next year, 1978, Williams won the ABA light welterweight title against Colin Derrick, who was stopped with a cut under the ferocity of Williams' two-fisted, non-stop attacking. I won the 1978 ABA title. Then I was picked to go to the Commonwealth Games in Edmonton, Canada. The whole team had to have a medical. I had mine. Uh, in a small hotel room in Russell Square um, with a supposedly unbiased doctor who was meant to know nothing about me. Uh, anyway, he, he gave me a medical, and um, if that's what you can call it, and um, I was told later, I received a letter from the ABA uh, several weeks later uh, telling me in a very curt letter that uh, uh, I was banned for boxing for the rest of my life. Uh, thank you for your services and goodbye. Eventually, Williams was given the reason. Defective eyesight, although he'd won the ABA title with it. He tried to fight the ban. So I went to a Harley Street specialist, um, who's also a consultant uh, for Moorfields, and he gave me uh, about an hour-long examination, and he said, there's uh, nothing wrong with your eyes. He says, uh, I just don't see any reason why you shouldn't box. And uh, so I received a letter of him stating my ophthalmic standards, etc. I showed this to the ABA, but again, they just weren't interested. He did send the letter to us from Harley Street, but it did say that in his view, in his view only, that uh, there would be no risk of a detached retina if he boxed, and he should be allowed to continue boxing. But he also said one of his eyes was much below the ABA standard and would not pass. I also went to my optician and I got the readings uh, because I've been with the same optician for, since I was about 14 years old and every year he tests me and my readings had never changed. My eyesight had remained the same all them years and I also showed this to the ABA but again I just wasn't interested. In 72, as a boy of 12, he did apply for a medical card and he did not then reach our required standard. And I think then the doctors, because he was a boy of 12, allowed him, allowed him to box. But of course, that couldn't happen today. We are strictly medically controlled and there's no flexibility today. If you don't make the standard, you cannot box. So in fact, he did box with eyesight that was below the ABA standards at that time? At the time he started at 12 years of age, I can't say what happened in each ensuing year because he didn't have his eyes checked until the Commonwealth Games pre-medical in 78. With no future in Britain, he went to Belgium, where boxing some years ago was nearly banned, and there doctors said he could box as a pro. How many specialists looked at you before you fought in Belgium? Before I fought in Belgium, must have been at least 15. Specialist. Fifteen specialists yeah, looked at you? Yeah, and um, one of them was Professor Francoise, the professor of the University of Brussels, who at that time was the top eye specialist in the world. He was the man who operated on Aristotle and Nassis and also saw the Shah of Iran. 
And so he gave you a clearance? He gave me a clearance. He said, there is no reason why you shouldn't box. After just one fight in Belgium, the ban came down on Williams again. In Geneva, Ray Clark, the secretary of the British Boxing Board, had met some Belgian officials and told them of Williams' ban in Britain. Other parts of his eye may have been perfectly healthy, but we have this one point about standards and there is a reason for it. And so we have to go by them. You can have the best eyesight in the world and you may have the unhealth unhealthiest eyes in the world. Myopia, which is short-sightedness, has got absolutely nothing to do with the health of your eyes. I agree with him that it doesn't mean you've got unhealthy eyes. But when you've got blows being rained around the eyes and the forehead, the percussion of this is likely to detach the very sensitive uh, retina if you're unlucky. Now, our experience has been that this can occur far more in myopic people, and that is why we don't allow them to box. British Board of Control Medical, compared to the Belgian medical, is like Stone Age man to modern man. It's, it's just no comparison. In, in Belgium, you have to go to a specialist for every part of your body to get a professional license. You have to have brain scans, heart, heart checks, ears, nose and throat specialists, blood specialists. You have to have everything. It takes weeks for you to get through a medical over there. Over here, it takes 15 minutes by your own private doctor. For a few weeks in 1978, Williams was banned throughout the whole of Europe. But, once more, he started fighting back. Anyway, he went to more specialists and more specialists and more specialists. And I spent most of my t more time in the waiting room than what I did in the ring. And in the end, I had so much uh, evidence behind me that the Belgian Federation, they finally agreed that there was no reason why I shouldn't box. The eye tests uh, Davis uh, underwent, he must have certainly have the best checked eyes in Europe. And it was always okay. For three years, he fought in Belgium, 22 fights without losing. But always between fights, he came home to Boreham Wood to live with his mother and train and work in England. I've had every, every job you can imagine, you know. Every time I went to Belgium, you, uh, understandably, uh, my governors, they weren't too sympathetic to the fact that I was going abroad fighting. So I usually found that when I did have to go abroad to fight, I'd uh, be given my cards, you know, and sent up the road. But um, so every time I returned from Belgium, I have to find myself another job. Life obviously was, was tough. Yeah. Um, you couldn't fight in Britain. You had to yeah. fight in Belgium. You were commuting backwards and forwards. You were losing jobs right, left and centre, having to find new jobs. Yeah. Now, at the back of your mind, why was all this worth it to you? Well, I was, I was bitter, I suppose, you know. My own country uh, kick, kicking me out like that, really. I was an exile, you know. I felt as though when I was fighting, to me, it was like a crusade, you know. I had to prove to people that if you're willing to try hard enough, you can do anything in this world, you know, but you must be a trier. Last year, he was nominated to fight Britain's Charlie Nash for the European title, an embarrassment for Britain. Would he have been allowed to fight Nash here? No, I'd, <clears throat> I think we would have had to have stood by our standards and said to the EBU, I'm sorry, it can't take place here, or to our promoters, I'm afraid you can't promote this contest here. You can promote it somewhere else if you want to, but uh, if that, that cannot take place in this country under our, our eyesight standards. It must surely disturb you that there seems to be one set of rules for over there and another set of rules here. Well, it does disturb me greatly because I think the most important thing is always the fitness of the boxer and the health of the boxer both before and after he's finished his career. Now, of course, doctors do have different opinions. But I think, as far as I'm concerned, when there is a doubt, then he should not be allowed to continue to box. The Belgians disagreed with us. They, in fact, put him in for a European title. We protested. We sent all our reports to the EBU. They decided against us, and it's a democratic uh, sort of decision that was made. So he was allowed, in fact, to go forward as a candidate. Embarrassment was prevented. Warming up for the Nash fight, Williams suffered the one injury he must have dreaded most. All of a sudden, one day, I started to see a little black dot in my visionary field. 
And then this little black dot got worse and worse and bigger and bigger until over about a month and a half period, I couldn't see out of my eye at all, out of my right eye. And I went into my last fight, I'd been only able to see out of my left eye. And so then that was my last fight before the European title fight. But I was so frightened to say anything because of all the hassle that I've had, all the aggravation I've had fighting, I suddenly was going to fight for the European title. That was my dream. So I thought, I must keep this to myself, you know. I mustn't tell anyone. I didn't even tell my own mother, you know, and I kept it completely to myself. So I thought, if I told anyone, they'd insist that um, I go to a doctor and everybody would suddenly start shouting, we told you so, we told you so, like, you know, what people are. So I kept it to myself. I won the fight, but then my manager said to me, well, you know, we've got to go for another medical day. So I said, well, I don't think we should, Jeff. And he said, why is that? And I said, because I can't see out of my right eye. And he said to me, what are you talking about? I said, well, I haven't been able to see out of it for about a month and a half now. He said, you're mad. He said, you've never said anything. I said, no, I said, because I wanted to fight for the European title so desperately. You know? So immediately he took me to a specialist and he concluded that I did detach retina and they rushed me into hospital where they performed an operation. And I was told uh, afterwards by several specialists that if I'd said something, any time when I saw, when I first saw that blackness, uh, that little black spot, if I'd said anything at any time then, all it would have needed was either tablets to clear it up or at the very, at the very most, uh, laser beam treatment, which would have taken about five minutes to do. It wouldn't have needed an operation at all. In actual fact, it was nothing what I had. But it was quite understandable that it didn't come to me. It was not sensible, but uh, owing to his previous history, he, he feared to be stopped again from boxing. And just before that, la that title fight, now he was uh, reaching to, to the extreme glory, which he, was, but, but he had been chasing after for four years. It was understandable, but not sensible. See, the European Boxing Union standard is minus five, and my eye now, uh, the optress, is minus seven. But before the operation, it was only minus two and a half. So if I never had, if I never had had the operation, which I needn't ever had done, uh, I would have been well within the limits for fighting for the title. Well, those 15 specialists happen to be proved wrong, unfortunately, and one idiot doctor sitting in London happens to have been proved right. For three years, Williams was bounced back and forth between medical men in Britain and Belgium who couldn't agree if he was fit to box, although they all sit under the flag of the European Boxing Union. A few weeks ago, he accepted advice never to box again. That's what I've been doing for the last few weeks, just sitting back and thinking, well, I've given them my whole life to boxing and I've got nothing out of it. I was just on the threshold of making something out of it and it was taken away from me. But uh, I'm a trier and I'm willing to try anything. I'm unemployed at the moment, but I'll find something. You know, there's a world out there just waiting for me, you know, and I'm going to grab it by the throat. <laughs>